Hello, and welcome to Chapter 22 Homework. As we go over the little centers that we had, Profit and Investment Center, and go through what it takes to complete the homework. So this is your host, Professor Naragon. And we're going on the adventure of a lifetime. No, just kidding. Just regular 22. So, 22 starts out with Macy's Department Store, and it has three departments, and it conducts advertising campaigns that benefit all departments. Advertising costs are $140,000 this year, and departmental sales for this year as follows. We have my numbers, have this currently going on. So each department, one, two, and three, have these sales. So let's go ask how much advertising cost is allocated. So let's zoom in so y'all can see. If it does, there we go. So you can see what's going on. So really with this one, all we gotta do is punch in our sales figures. So 217,500 for me. 408,900. 243 600 and so our total cost is really 870 of total sales so next we actually have to put in oh, we have to find the percentage so let's go ahead and put in the advertise to allocate which is what they give us is the cost nose connect will fill it in cool so with that being said We'll go and go and actually go to your notes to just show you what we're doing. So allocate, allocate, allocate. So we're doing mostly this stuff right here. So this is what we're doing. We want to allocate and so forth and so on. Mostly because I didn't click on my calculator right off the bat. Anyway, so we're going to take 217,500. And divide by our total, which is 870. 70. Almost made a mistake there. 70. There we go. And that's 25%. Notice that these are in percentage, so you need to put it as a percentage. Okay? So that's 25. We have 408, 900. Divide by the same amount. That's 47%. And then the last one should be under 47% because it's 243. Divided by 870, 1, 2, 3. So that'll be 28%. And that should equal out to 100%. So if this does not equal to 100%, we've got some problems. Yes! We've got problems, but it does equal out to 100. So next, all we do is take our cost and times it by a percentage. So 140 times 0.25, 35,000 there. And again, if you have a nice little calculator that lets you kind of edit, you can just type in, delete, type. You don't have to keep entering, repeat, repeat. So 65,800. And then, of course, remaining 28,339,200. Okay, so our cost right here should equal exactly the cost allocated. So total cost. And that's really it. That's it with this problem. Again, this is our profit center actually allocating the cost. Question two is doing the same thing. Oh my god, we're not changing. So, this one now, we have Marvin and they're doing mixing balling. Mixing has 480 employees, while balling has 320. So, a total of 800 employees. Again, all we have to do is divide. So 
We got, what was it, 400, 480, divided by 800, 60%, so, this should be 60, 40. Okay? I mean, if it's easy, it's just 2, then basically it's a difference, and that should be right, and that does look right, since it is under half of 800. So admin expense to allocate is 180,000. So again, all we do is times. So 180 times 0 0.6, 108. And then of course times it by 0.4 just to make sure, 72. Bad when you type in wrong things. 72, 1, 2, uh, lost number lock. So. Really? It froze on us. That's not cool, Connect. Not cool at all. I want to hit back. Oh, let's refresh. See if it still gives me the same question. Nope. Uh, wait. Continue. Okay. Well, that's kind of weird. Anyway, let's go back to question number two. All right. So now we got to change that bytes. Thank you for that. But now it's 390 and 260. Okay. So we gotta redo this guys, sorry, but 390 now divided by 650, again 60%, well they liked 60-40, so maybe it's just that way with this problem. So here we go again, so 164,000 times 0.6. 98,400 and times it by 0 0.4 and again we should come out exactly right so again always want to make sure this matches this this is a hundred percent and we're good to go. So that's question one and question two. So, next question is now computing return on investment for each of these divisions. And if we have to, go to your notes and we go all the way to our formulas and it really is income divided by average assets. Or for this one, basically take this one divided by average assets. So, which I can just copy, but it won't let me. So, 5852 divided by 26,600,000. Six Should be 22%. And again, can you put them in decimals? You have to convert them back to percentages. So when you hit check my work, there you go. And that's really all you're doing with this problem. So instead of wasting some time and me going back and forth, that's really all that's done. All you're doing is taking net income and dividing by average assets. Nothing more than this one right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to question four. Question four now has assume a target income of 12% of average investment assets. And what do you do? Target income and residual income. But 
it's got this right here. So it's going to ask you from these three which one to use. So let's do the same thing. Let's go back to our formula. Let's go see if we can find target income. So target, target, target. That's cycle. Here we go. Target investment income. Again, that is going to be basically. Oh, where is the formula so I can show y'all? Sometimes I don't even remember the notes. All right, so target income, actually it's down here, is usually a percentage of investment assets with the percentage typically reflecting the cost. So again, for us, it's our average invested assets times whatever percentage of target income. I don't know why that took me so long to find. So target return is 12%. Our average assets are right here, so 24,500, one more threes, phones, 149, and then I think it's one day. Whoa, a little bit too many zeros. Two, one, two. There we go. So as you can see, across the board, Connect's going to start doing it for you. All we have to do is do the first one. So again, that's just taking 24,500 and times it by our actual return. And they want about 2940000 So again, always hit check my work. As you go through, notice that it is kind of off, but really all we're doing is looking through at what it is. Next, it's going to ask us for residual income. So, this form is a little bit easier to find right here. It's investment center income minus target investment center income. So, here, net income less the target income. So again, that's just taking, all right, let me zoom out just a sec. There we go. So 6,300,000 minus 2,940,123. And we're going to do the same. Nope. And of course, each scenario is a little bit different. So one has it as income, one has it basically even, which is the middle, and then one's going to have it for a loss. So back to zoom, because it was just easier just to see the numbers that way. So with us right here, we're going to take that 6,300,000. Minus our target, which is 2,940,000. And we got 3,360,000. Okay. So that one makes a profit. Computer accessories, of course, is going to be a loss on residual income. So 1,000,000. Oh, 150,000? Yeah. And the extra zeros. Zeros. Zero, zeros. And then you get 2,352,000. 2,352,000. Two, For a loss of, looks like 1,202,000. So again, when it's a loss, enter that minus sign. Okay? And notice, Connect will only warn you about that when there's probably going to be a loss. 
Answer and losses were the minus sign. Again, check my work. Answer is complete and correct. That's really what's going on. This problem wants to give you all three scenarios. If it breaks even, if it makes money, or it's making a loss. All right, question five. Question five is a company shipping division or investment center has sales of 2,580,000, net income of 903,000, and average invested assets of 1,720,000. So we need to choose a numerator and we have to choose a denominator for profit margin and investment turnover. Well, again, this is where the notes come in. Here's our formulas. So again, always flip through. It's always good to have them both. So income over sales, sales over assets. So income over sales and sales over assets. Okay, that's really is, and all we have to do is fill in the numbers. So if then income was 903, 1, 2, 3. And our cells were 2580123. We find a profit margin of 35%. While investment turnover on that same amount of cells, oh, put too many zeros, divided by our average assets. We'll come out to 1.5. We're actually doing pretty good if it's coming out of 1.5. So again, check. Everything's good. Formulas are good. Turnover is good. Turnover is really good. Profit margin is really good. So the ROI will be extremely good. So look at that. We're already halfway through. This the this homework is actually very quick. Okay, so again, next one, you must prepare a return on investment analysis for the region manager of fast and great burgers. Awesome. So they better be fast and great. Better be out the water burger. Can't be that water burger, then get out of Texas. <laughs> but this growing chain is trying to decide which outlet of two alternatives to open. Location A requires 500,000 investment and is expected to year an annual net income of 80,000. Second location B requires 20,000 investment and expecting a year of net income of 40,000. Okay, so for us, we have to do ROI. So again, let me pop to the notes. And again, ROI again is income over assets. So for us, and there's only two choices. So again, if you hit check my work, if you get them switched, they're going to tell you no. You can just pick the other one. Sometimes it's easy that way. Yay, check my work. So location A says it's going to yield 80000 But we're going to have to invest 500 While location B is 40,000, and we have to invest 200. So, all we have to do is do the math. So, 80,000 divided by 500 equals to 0.16, or 16%. And then, of course, the other one, 40. Divide by 200,000. And it equals out to 20%. So, if we're actually looking at this, we're probably going to recommend location B. Because location B has a higher return on investment. So again, hit check my work. And of course that is correct. And there we go. So, 
not too much related to that one. Okay? And yes, if I didn't realize it scrolled down, I probably would end up skipping this question. But really, again, it's just really deciding on which one. So if I do skip any of these like secondary questions or another form, I do apologize. Put that in the comments. I'll re-upload uh, that problem. Okay? So seven, 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 seven. A food manufacturer reports the following for two divisions: the beverage and cheese. And we got lots of tabs. Yay, tabs! So we're going to have to compute return on investment, compute profit margin, and compute investment turnover for the year. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Well, that's also because we don't have the average. So we're going to have to figure that out. So, here we go. First one, return on investment. We just did this. This is income over average investment assets. So, beverage. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I don't have to constantly scroll too bad. So, operating income was 354 and 639. 4 and 639. Okay, so income is good to go ahead and put in. Notice it's already doing our calculations. All we got to do is put in numbers. So, we got to do average investment assets. So, let's start with beverage. So, average again is taking 200. The beginning uh, plus the ending, so 2,600, 200, 500,000. Enter and take that answer and divide by 2. Should be 2,550. I don't think we're subtracting them, we usually don't. Now, oh. let's check just to make sure. Yep, just had to make sure on that. So that's beverage, and then of course we got 4,900 plus 4,800. Divide that. Oh, don't do that because the calculator is going to do that. Answer divide by two. 4850. Okay, so there we go. Check my work. Good. Everything's good. We got that. And we already got all the information we need. We don't have to redo the average investment. So starting off, part two, profit margin was income divided by sales. So again, our income was 354 and 639. And 639. Sales was two six eight six and three nine thirty. So check my work. Boom. So really now it's all just fill in the blank kind of thing. So investment turnover is of course sales divided by average investing assets so again 2686 this was 3930 and all we have to do is go back to require one here's our numbers we already checked those made sure that they're correct so 2550 and 4850 okay Check my work, and everything's correct. There we go. This one is done. So really, it's just taking the formulas and get inputting. The only thing that's different this time around is that you have to figure out average investment assets before you do anything. Okay. So so far everything's good. Hopefully. Again, if you have questions, put them in the comments. It's always good. I can always get to y'all. 
So, next one, we're going to have to figure out cycle times. Okay? Cycle times is easy. I mean, if you need to go back to notes, it's the last page. But really, all we do for cycle time is add in, add all the times. So, process time, inspection time, move time, and wait time. Okay? And then we're just going to put in the times. So, 11 days. Inspection time to 1.4. Move time was 5.5, and wait time was 9 days. So nothing too bad. Again, of course, Connect builds it all right. So it's 26.9. Now, part two is market efficiency, which is basically taking the process time divided by cycle time. Oh, look, got to put in the formula. So process time. Divide by cycle time. So 11 days, and this was 26.9. There we go. And somehow I lost that, so put that back in. So check, check for that one. Okay, so we have that information already. So require three it says. Management believes it can reduce move time by 1.10 days and wait time by 2.5 days by adopting lean manufacturing techniques. Compute the cycle efficiency assuming that company predictions are correct. Okay, so this is still process time by the cycle time. This is still 11 days. So all this is different. They can reduce move time by 1.1 and wait time by 2.5, which is really 3.6 if you add those together. So take our 26.9, and really all you have to do is subtract what they're going to reduce them by. So reduce by 1.1. And reduce by 2.5. So our new wait time is 23.3. Again, check, and boom, there we go. Now, that one, I mean, this is process time, cycle time, and cycle efficiency is not too overly difficult. There, R could be, but this one, just watch how it reduces the total time, which is what they're doing. You don't have to go back and re-add and all that. Really, all you have to do is subtract the days that they're getting rid of. Alright, question number nine. We have an advertising department expenses of 54100 and purchasing department expenses three thirty three thousand eight hundred of cozy bookstore and allocates to the three departments as such right here again it's gonna be different numbers for y'all but guess what not much is going to happen here okay that's going first do allocation of expenses okay so Complete the following table by allocating the expense of the two service departments, advertising purchasing to the three operating departments. All right. So allocation of expense, allocation of service. So I'll get into that one right there. That's our income statement. So this one is just basically taking the service departments and doing that like second step that we did in the notes. So of course this is advertising. Advertising will be based on dollar sales and purchase orders. Okay. So figuring this, advertising should be based on sales. 
I don't even know how they got floor space. There's no floor space at all. So, books was 143,500. Magazines was 70,000. Newspapers, 136,500. Comes out to 350. Cool. Purchasing, we'll go ahead and just put them down so I don't have to keep scrolling up. Uh, except for cost. So, that was 1,440. This was 756. And newspapers was 1404. Cool. So, with that being said, now I want the numerator and uh, denominators. So, we're zooming this in. Let's put go ahead and put the cost to be allocated. Again, this is 54100. And these are found in the problems. So, right here, advertising. And purchasing is three thirty-three thousand eight hundred. All right, so Connect's going to help us out, but all we got to do is put in the numerators, which is should be the same amount divided by the total. So there we go, one three six five hundred. I don't know why they their connect wants you to do this because we can actually do this on the calculator. But hey, if they're going to go ahead and do the math for us, all for them. The only thing that they're not going to do is this percentage right here. So 54 100. It's got times by 41%. 22 181. Okay, and there we go. Cool beans. Cool. Maybe easy stuff going on here when Connect does it for you. All you gotta do is make sure you put in the right numbers. So again, same thing down here. Denominator. Now all we gotta do is take 33,800 times 40. That's 13,520. Alright. Now, definitely hit check my work after this step just to make sure everything is correct. Now that everything is correct, we can jump to the income statement. So, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. So, here, first off, when we allocate these on the spreadsheet, the big thing that you've got going on is that Advertising purchase is now to zero. They have been allocated out. So for us, we have to put a negative in to zero these out. Okay, so they're gone. Now they're over here. So we gotta go to this section and just input. So 22,181, uh, 10,820, And then finally 21099. Okay. And then purchasing department is 13520. Then you have 7098. And then lastly 13182. And then, of course, check my work. Everything should be in correctly, and we're good to go. So that's nine. Or already to ten. I bet it hasn't even been 30 minutes. Well, it probably been a little bit more due to other things. So now we get to hit the big question. And it's not it's not too terribly bad. Because the first one is return on investment. Which again we know net income divided by average investment assets. So looking up here, net income 2624, 2624, 123. 
Average investment assets was 16,400. So it's 16%. We do the sporting goods, 1860. And then 18600. So 10%. Which department is most efficient at using assets to generate returns for the company? And that's going to be electronics. Again, which one's the higher? So each one of these, check my work. And it looks like I put in, I didn't transfer correctly. What did I not do? Oh, I did sales. Oops. That's what happens when you go too fast. And still, electronic speed out because I checked my work. It was still correct. Oops. So double check your numbers. I was just trying to move a little bit faster since it was the tail end. And didn't realize I put in sales. So step two, step two wants us to find residual income now. Now we know it's still net income, so 2624. Net income for sporting goods was 1860. And now we gotta find the target net income. And target net income was again 12% of average investment assets so we're going to take the average investment assets and times them by 12 percent so calculator so there's our electronics and times by 12 so it's 1,968 okay Sporting goods, let's go ahead and knock this out. This time, use the right number. So 12,400 times 0.112. We got 1,488,000. So let's see if electronics can do it for two for two. So take each one and subtract. So 2624. Two, three minus one, nine, six, eight, one, two, three. So six, five, six. So six hundred fifty six thousand. One more three. Okay. Now we got one, eight, six, zero. Minus one, four, eight, eight, one, two, three. Three seventy two. Okay, cool. So, we got them out. Which one gives us the best residual income? And apparently Electronics has one again. So, check my work. And everything's good for Require 2. So, last requirement. Require 3. Alright, assume Electronics Department is presenting with a new investment opportunity that will yield a 15% return on investment. Oh, back to question. Okay. Should the new investment opportunity be accepted? Well, it's going to yield a 15%. Should it be accepted? That, I mean, I would go yes, and yes is correct. Now, Really, you I mean it's going to yield a 15%. It's almost yielding exactly the same. So that is yes. It's a good percentage. If it was yielding something really low, probably would not. So that's it. And that's it for this homework. Nothing less, nothing more, nothing really extremely tough. Not like uh, you have to compute like all the profit center and do all that. It's broken up. So that's it for chapter 22. So again, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And this is your adventure. Now turning over for the next chapter of life. Yeah, so party it on, dudes. So this is your host, Professor Naragon, signing off. Y'all have a good one.